Is muscle memory real? In this video, I'll break down the science and tell you the answer. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf with you here today, PhD in sports science with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're talking about muscle memory. Let's start with how muscle memory is supposed to work. Muscle memory refers to the idea that after a layoff from training, regaining lost muscle, for example, is a lot easier than gaining it in the first place. For example, let's say you've been training in a gym for five years. You take a year fully off from training. The idea of muscle memory is that when you return to training after that year off, you'll be able to regain muscle a lot more easily than it initially took you to gain in the first place. So while it might have taken you five years to gain the initial amount of muscle that you lost during that year of layoff, it might take you only six months or 12 months to regain those five years worth of muscle growth. But how would muscle memory actually work? Well, let's start with some basic physiology. Skeletal muscle fibers are large multinucleated cells that contain hundreds to thousands of nuclei, that's the plural of nucleus by the way, each. According to something called myonuclear domain theory, each nucleus within your muscle fibers only has transcriptional capacity to synthesize new proteins in its immediate vicinity. Interestingly, these nuclei within your muscle cells seem to be evenly distributed across it. It's kind of like if each nucleus had its own magnetic pole, right? And these magnets or these nuclei were kind of repelling each other at all times, such that the nuclei would eventually just be evenly distributed across your whole muscle cell. Here's the interesting bit. Because myonuclei are responsible for transcribing and synthesizing proteins within your muscle cells, the number of myonuclei should linearly increase with an increase in muscle fiber size, aka muscle growth. And indeed, this is what myonuclear domain theory predicts, that there's always going to be a linear association or correlation between how big a muscle fiber is and how many myonuclei it has. And so when you lose muscle, aka muscle fibers get smaller, you should also see a drop in how many myonuclei you have around in that muscle cell. The truth is, this isn't that clear. In fact, some data shows in animals that myonuclei are lost when you lose muscle. So that does seem to support the myonuclear domain theory. Whereas other studies show that you actually maintain the amount of myonuclei in your muscle fiber even when your muscle actually shrinks. Whenever we're talking about myonuclei and how many there are and whether or not you lose myonuclei during, for example, no training, you gotta keep in mind that the methods that we've used in the past for counting myonuclei weren't quite as advanced as more recent ones. So with these studies, just take it with a grain of salt. This is all very preliminary. Recent developments in myonuclei counting techniques will help us determine the answers here a little bit more clearly in the future. So if transcription from myonuclei is the bottleneck to growing muscle from scratch, perhaps if myonuclei do truly stay around when you lose muscle, this could explain muscle memory, right? Because the myonuclei stay around and they're usually what stops you from growing quite as much muscle as fast, if you have them around from the last time you trained, before you lost that muscle, that could just accelerate the process a lot. There is one issue though. The only evidence we have of myonuclei mediated muscle memory is in rodents, aka in rats. In humans, things aren't quite as clear. To date, there's only one study in humans really trying to look at the concept of myonuclear domain theory and how that relates to muscle memory. Here's what they did. They took some participants and they assigned their limbs to one of two conditions. In one condition, for one limb, they had to train for 20 weeks straight. In the other condition, they didn't train at all during these 20 weeks. So one limb was training and one limb was not training. Following these 20 weeks of training or no training, they took 10 weeks off training entirely. Then after these 10 weeks off, they took five weeks of training again, but this time for both limbs to see would the limb that's been trained previously that potentially garnered some myonuclei regain muscle or gain muscle faster than the limb that hadn't trained before and thus hadn't gotten a greater amount of myonuclei. Long story short, both limbs saw the same muscle growth. So if you expected muscle memory to be a thing here and you thought, well, the limb that trained previously should have more myonuclei around and thus should regain size pretty quickly and should see greater rates of muscle growth compared to the limb that didn't train, that didn't seem to pan out in this study. Later, other researchers performed a secondary analysis on the data set from this study. Specifically, they looked only at participants that actually gained myonuclei during the 10-week training phase. 
What they found is that these participants lost the myonuclei that they gained in their training limb during those 20 weeks of T-training. What this means practically is that myonuclei that you recently gained during training might not actually be able to stick around that much. As I discussed earlier in animal studies, they often do stick around, and often for months or years. However, in humans, it might potentially be the case that if you only recently acquired new myonuclei, those aren't quite as prone to staying around when you don't train. So, to make a long story short, in humans, myonuclei don't seem to be the only thing playing a role. If they were the only mechanism involved at this point, the evidence would be a little bit more clear. However, just because myonuclei might not be the exact mechanism responsible for this phenomenon that we've often observed, doesn't mean the phenomenon doesn't exist. In fact, here are three studies that show that after detraining, regaining previous muscle mass gains is a lot easier than gaining in the first place. Let me give you an example. In a study by Starin and colleagues, after an initial 20 weeks of training to gain some muscle and some strength, once participants took some time off and lost those adaptations, it only took them six weeks of training to regain everything they'd gained during those initial 20 weeks. And so you can regain muscle and strength seemingly about three times as fast as when you first gained it. So muscle memory does seem to help you regain muscle after a layoff. Importantly, as myonuclei are concerned, it seems like complete bed rest and really long times off of say more than a few months or a few years might be problematic as far as your myonuclei are concerned. Typically, when you do see that myonuclei kind of go away, it happens when rodents or humans are exposed to complete rest, like for example, bed rest when they're injured, and or when longer time frames are present, such as a few months or a few years. The concept of muscle memory might also have implications for steroid users. Let me give you an example from a rodent study. In this rodent study, there were two groups. One group received testosterone, the other group received a sham treatment, essentially nothing. The group that received testosterone saw increases in muscle size and increases in myonuclei, whereas the group receiving a sham treatment didn't see either of those things. Following this period, testosterone was removed from the testosterone group. Guess what happened? The rats who took testosterone lost muscle size, but their myonuclei number remained unchanged. Following this period, both groups were then exposed to something called overload which is when researchers remove muscle from rodents in order to add tension or make a muscle work harder. Kind of the equivalent of what we would do in the gym with resistance training, essentially exposing that muscle to more tension. The group that was taking testosterone previously and that had a higher myonuclei count around, regained muscle very quickly and gained muscle at a much faster pace compared to the sham treatment rodent group. What this means is that someone who's previously used testosterone or other drugs may be able to regain muscle more easily than a natty because they've accreted more myonuclei. And myonuclei do stay around for a while. And so even if someone used testosterone a few years ago, or maybe even a few decades ago, they may still have an advantage now over someone who's never taken them. The final area of evidence where the concept of muscle memory might be helpful is in older people returning to resistance training. While the evidence in this area isn't super consistent, it's relatively mixed. There is some hope. There is data suggesting that myonuclei do stay around for a while. Let's say, for example, you lifted in your 20s and then you stop lifting for 40 or 50 years and then return to lifting. Data suggests that it's possible that some of the myonuclei might have stayed around and thus when you start lifting again in your older years, you'll be able to regain some of that muscle you had when you were younger and that generally leads to better health. That said, the retention of myonuclei does not seem to be indefinite. Let me give you some takeaways from this video. First, the concept of muscle memory is not super well understood yet. It does seem to occur in humans, but whether or not it's due to myonuclei or not is a little bit less clear. In fact, most of the evidence we have is in rodents. Myonuclei do seem to be staying around longer than muscle fiber. So if you're starting to lose muscle, there's a good chance that your myonuclei are still around and will help you regain muscle size later down the line when you start lifting again, for example. However, myonuclei do not seem to be staying around indefinitely. So you couldn't just take decades and decades off and necessarily expect to regain the muscle you lost instantly. Finally, and this is pretty speculative, it might be the case that newly acquired myonuclei, say the ones you've gained over the past five to 15 weeks of training, do not stick around as easily as myonuclei you've been acquiring and kept around for multiple years. That's the video. If you enjoyed this video on muscle memory and the concept of myonuclear domain theory, leave a comment down below, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Peace.